Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time it's Fascination, developed by Tomahawk and published by Cocktail Vision in 1991. The game begins with some suitable music and you can see the concept was Muriel Tramis and this was definitely a fringe development. Graphics Yannick Chosse and Joseph Kloitmans and Rashid. And those guys also worked on a variety of other cocktail games, including the African Raiders game, which featured us going on a safari in Africa. And code was by MDO and he or she or they coded the Goblins games and also Advanced Galactic Empires. At the beginning we'll have to get through a very simple and effective lock and then we get the main story. We're playing Dora Lise, the sexiest captain on the Paris to Miami flight. If you like suspense, well, you're invited to spend a delicious weekend with me fasten your seatbelts, we're ready to take off, we're in for a bumpy ride. We find ourselves at the Hotel Pelican and we are in Miami, phew what a trip, that guy who died in my arms, the last thing he said to us, at least he enjoyed his last glimpse of the world. Ah, I'll get this uncomfortable uniform off fast and take a quick shower. So we find ourselves playing as a woman and so the first thing that I like to do is pour myself a drink first of all, and that eases the tension of whatever is going on. Let's grab that drink, and it's probably a fruit cocktail. Drinking is good for my skin. Well, definitely if it's water-based is, and so what can we do? We can grab this jug, and it's difficult to place that back on the desktop, but what I realised is if you hold down the right mouse button and press that, that will return to the previous place. There is also a briefcase here, and there was some kind of scientist on the plane, he gave us this briefcase and his last words were "Ah!" apparently according to the game manual so that's precisely what I'm entering at the moment and hopefully that will give us entry to that briefcase the toothbrush is electrically operated and I'm not quite sure the voltage which we're supposed to use but let's just leave that on 110 because it's American so let's just click and somehow close this thing and you can see that everything appears in boxes and windows with its own close option let's click on nothing of interest except for these pajamas I'm not interested in that but there's something in that compartment so let's just plug that in by closing this and hopefully dragging that towards the socket I'm not quite sure of the interface on this game and oh look we've managed to find an interface in the drawer let's plug that in now we're connected so hopefully having found the adapter Somehow we could figure out how to plug this thing into the wall.
And there it is, we've got it! And the space inside opens up and reveals something secret. Secret message, what can it be? And something, just get in touch with the president and give it to him. Well, I'm not sure if we are mainly a stewardess or mainly a spy working for the American CIA. I'm not quite sure, but we'll certainly find out in this adventure. We've got a vial. What can we do with a vial? That's important, we're going to have to hide it somewhere, so the ice cube tray would look like a great hiding place, not bad, let's use that. Let's pour some water in there, in the ice cube tray, and see if we can get that on the pixel, let's fill that up, and a little water, not too bad, and because it's a refrigerator and a freezer compartment, hopefully we can close that. And that means that we've got that secure in an ice cube, so that's fantastic. But we're also going to use a telephone or maybe even a fax machine. And so we're going to have to clear this socket and use that for this plug which is hanging around on the floor. We're going to have to take the adapter out first of all, I think. The cable doesn't fit the socket. So I'll keep trying that. Unfortunately it doesn't work. These are American sockets, so... We're going to have to take the adapter out first of all and put that away. And we've got a clue, Quantum Unlimited Lab, and that's the telephone number, 7340825. Let's call them up and see what happens. For reception, dial zero. This is the Quantum Labs. What, you want to speak to the president? The president? I'm sorry, he's not available. You'll have to call back later on. So, unfortunately, that was a clue. Well, you'll have to write down those numbers because that will be used again later on in the game. So, it's definitely one of those games that requires us to write down heaps and heaps of numbers. And so, that's the first one. Write it down. So, what can we do? Let's, uh plug the refrigerator back in, that's good, that'll make some ice cubes, and now let's wander out, we find ourselves in reception, and in reception is a few more clues, a keyring, well that might come in handy, someone's lost the keyring, I better hand that in at reception, and so if you just click on the reception desk and the receptionist, hands us over a key to a locker so we can head off at this point or we can investigate something else we've got a pool key that's our first item newspapers not really interested in those the miami tribune they talk about mr nicholas dying on the plane oh well he's dead so what that's past news what else have we got well we've got more naked ladies let's see if it's true if the americans like ample breasts can we flick through these pages let's have a look and well it would be great this was in great detail this is a plain OCS game and as far as I know they're using 32 colours all the photos are signed Lou Dale that's another clue but the telephone number is partly torn off so we're gonna have to find that telephone number if we want to continue in that game you can see 674 is the first number and I think that's random every time you play the game so that's a clue let's hold on to that so we've got one news clipping and See Jeff Miller, that was the date 27 1905 Quantum Lab Special 6th Gen, and the person nine is triple eight quadruple one. So, if we find that, that's direct number to the Quantum Labs, that's definitely a number to write down, and we'll need to ring that up. I don't think that changes throughout the entire game, and that's always the same number every single time you play it. So, a who's who directory reveals something that's worth 500 million at this point so what else can we do well we can return to our room if we want to do that by clicking on the elevator and there is also more clues to be found back in the lobby but what i want to do is use that telephone again to telephone that guy that means i need to unplug the refrigerator put the adapter back in again and then hopefully we can plug in the telephone extension line 
to use that. That's all you need to do to activate the telephone again. Let's triple eight and quad one. That number one 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 one. And the interface is slightly laggy. As you can see. Good morning, Miss Dora. And we can now figure out what's going on. We've got an entry code for a building. That's A4621 on this particular play. And A4621 is something that we'll have to write down for later in the game. So we've just telephoned the labs. We're going to find out what's going on. We've got a secret vial and we've got the access numbers that they're expecting us. So let's plug that refrigerator back in, get them ice cubes going again and return to that lobby. So we've found a clue. We've used up that clue by telephoning the guys. And hello, Dora. Guess who's just in time to see you? Well, it's Robert Cafetere. And he's your boyfriend. And he'll be meeting you out by the pool. So that's something else. Let's head out there. And hi, Dora, my darling, my little firefly. I haven't crashed your plane yet. Well, not quite yet. No way, you're macho. And so we've got the old flirting routine. Yes, if this reminds you of Jackie Brown, that's definitely something. Jackie Brown was definitely a hot topic when this game was released. And so we're playing a very exotic lady indeed, who's just had a very romantic interlude. So what can we do? We can talk to these girls and we've got a hat. What can we do with the hat? Well, the hat can only go in one place and that's on the girl's head. That's the only place that you can figure to put it and that's the only place where it'll work. Let's put it on her head. That's great. How do you like it? Oh, it's not too bad, but it's a bit out of fashion these days. Let's talk to Sharon and we're on duty, so let's get something non-alcoholic. And also, this is a cup of coffee. Great. That also should come with a few cubes. That's also great because cane sugar is something that we'll need later on. Let's grab it. Let's grab those cubes. So if you made the wrong decision there and got drunk on duty, well, you can't do that. Let's drink that coffee. And what else can we do here? Well, this is a tropical paradise here in Miami. Robert, Robert, I want a massage. So come on then, come over and give me a massage. Crazy. Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Robert. Hi, Dora. What's going on? Well, you know, you heard about that death at the airport? Man in a wheelchair with a white cat stroke in it. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Well, he gave me a briefcase and said, ah. And I opened it and I got a vial out of it and that's the way I found my way all the way through here and I've got a number and after the conversation I'm going to ring that number but in the meantime I managed to get this flashlight off the guy so let's grab that flashlight and that will help us a lamp it's called even though it said it was a flashlight before it's obviously not a table lamp it's obviously a torch so what can we do here we'll buy the poolside so let's flick this switch and drain some water and illuminate the lamp which illuminates something on the bottom which is a microphone pendant and micro transmitting pendants need to be collected in this game if you want to get anywhere with it and if you didn't find that poolside switch then you wouldn't have found that pendant in the first place let's put that in our inventory and so what else can we do well we found a locker key if you remember these are the poolside lockers you can see in the background so guess what whilst we're here let's just check out these lockers and see if that locker key works and hopefully locked it's locked we can't get in there because it's locked so let's use the key pool key and let's see what we can find here it's a walkman and so just like a James Bond movie there's a broken walkman in here and a battery compartment and the battery compartment is one of those key slot things where you put a, a coin in there do we have a coin? Well, not the moment, so, well, we can't access the battery slot and get the battery out and charge that, whatever. But what we can do is figure our way out to get through to the main lobby. And I think you yeah, press the hall button on the wall. It looks like wall to me, but why would anybody put a sign saying wall on a wall? So that's hall, and if you click on that, then that should return us back to the lobby 
of the hotel and yes if you find that disc icon you can load and save and quit at any point and I'm not sure if this was hard drive installable I'm using the WHD load which is virtually silent as you can hear that's why I'm talking so quickly and so numerously you can see I'm playing that at the moment it came on two discs fantastic so what can we do well we can rummage around in the ashtray and yes we found a token for an arcade machine that'll do that's precisely a token that we need so hopefully if we can somehow combine that with that item that we picked up then we can operate that did we leave that behind in the pool did we pick that up I think that's still in the lockers so let's check that out again yep still there let's grab that and now we can use that coin that we found whatever it is that token and that should reveal a battery but it doesn't it reveals well we need that full of flashlight fantastic so how do we combine that with the flashlight and, and well it looks like we've already put that in there that's handy that saves us figuring that out so that's all of the puzzles solved on this particular place so it gives us two quill on the horizon so if we click on that that will take us to the headquarters downtown So that's our liaison book for tonight at 8 o'clock. So let's see the figure of that woman. It gives us a street address which disappears fairly quickly. Of course, it's supposed to be loading the game on the disc version. And I think you can click on some items on that street. That's a telephone. So what do we want to do? Do we want to go in the parking lot of the telephone or the quill reception? And I've no idea what quill is, but it's some kind of man from uncle thing. So we've got a combination fantastic we've been given a number already on that telephone do we remember what that number is did we write that down or are we going to telephone ahead to the reception desk and tell them that we're on our way what do we decide to do at this point well we've clicked on the telephone do we use it and we have a token so we can use the telephone token in that token slot and the phone only takes tokens so do we have one yes we do what number are we going to enter yes triple eight quadruple one Reception people know you're coming, but by the way, we've changed the code to get around here. Write this down 879. Alright, remember that. It's another code for the code book. You'll need the secret code number to move around, so if you don't write that code down, unfortunately, that place is going to be locked up. Let's call reception, and if you enter that from reception, just nothing, because that's not the code that we need to get through to reception to unlock the door or whatever we're supposed to do because we've got codes already and if you haven't written those down well you're gonna have to rifle through them and try them one at a time it can only be one of a few so let's skip forward to find the right place in my notebook and let's enter a few codes let's see if that works 789 no that didn't work what can we do? Well, we can find another code, and one of them started with A. That's right. What was it? A, 4, was it 6? What was it next? 2, and then 1. That gets us into the building. So, while this guy's back's turned, there's a key pointing right towards us, but we can't get it because of a dog. And that's fantastic effect. Unfortunately, we can't get through that dog at the moment, but we can give it some sugar on the watchdog that will get rid of it. So if you didn't pick the coffee at that point, that's a dead end situation. So we've now got the room key. Let's check out the register. It's supposed to be a complete solution to fascination, which would be handy, but we can't read it. 
and so there's a man at work over there, let's call him over, he seems to be playing some kind of June 2 clone, this was released in 1991, so that would be very apt, unfortunately I'm still trying to read the solution, which I can't, but we're definitely going to have to refer to the solution online many times to get me through anywhere in this game. Hello Senora, unfortunately Mr Wheeler isn't around so unfortunately you can't grab him, you'll just have to leave the building and we've got a key so that's all well and good, we can't do anything else so let's return back to that street hopefully. What can we do next? Well, let's click on that parking lot and investigate that. We can see, yet again, more objects that we can interact with back to the street and storeroom. Do we have the storeroom key? Yes, we do. We've just got that storeroom key. Let's use it on the keyhole. What do we have in there? Well, it's dark. Oh, well, that's a difficult puzzle, isn't it? It's dark in there, so let's use the flashlight or the flash lamp or the torch and hopefully by switching that on we can locate some clues what have we got in here, well there's a cat or a rat and can't find anything else, there's an old boot there's some liquor it looks like, click on that, no nothing happening what's this in the bottom corner, nothing and nothing, nothing, nothing so at this point, guess what I had to do, I had to leave the computer and look it up in the solution and that's why nothing appears to be moving on the screen at this point. What am I supposed to do in this locker? There's something that I'm supposed to pick up. Well, apparently there's supposed to be a switch. And if you don't know about that switch, you won't see it. But if you do know about that switch, then you can find it. And it's somewhere in here. Do I click on this? No. Where is it? It's on the side of the locker according to the solution. I can't see anything. Nothing seems to be here. And what is there? What is that red thing? I'm not quite sure. And ah, there is a button. Let's press that hook. Hook, it's holding the door open. Let's close it. Behind that is a jacket. Can we interact with that jacket or are we supposed to interact with this panel behind here? No idea, let's click on that anyway. Let's see what it does. Nothing apparently. So it must be something to do with the jacket. So the game never afraid to leave us completely in the dark about what we're supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to be doing it. And it's one of those adventures where if you know what to do, you can rush straight to the solution. So that's directly what I'm actually doing at the moment. While nothing's going on, there's supposed to be a jacket pocket, I think, that I'm supposed to be looking for. So let's find it. There it is. And that's the only thing in this locker. So let's return back. Let's see if we can find that. I'll never be free. I'm a long time woman. And it's a set of car keys. So we know what to do with the set of car keys. This guy's obviously put them in the jacket pocket. There's obviously one of these cars. That thing fits. Let's try it in the first one. Can it be so obvious? Keyhole. And it's the right key, but the door is jammed. Oh well, that's a seeming dead end, it's the right key, what can we do with that? We can talk to John the drunk guy, and I can't even sleep in peace, yeah, you know, why don't you, you have to give it a kick, man, kick it, kick the wheel, alright then, kick the tyre, I'll do as he says, I'll kick the tyre to unjam the door, that always works, even though it's never worked for me, because tires aren't usually connected to doors. So in here, what can we do? We'll check out that key card. And we'll definitely have that magnetic key card stuck in the door. We'll have that key card. So is there anything in that glove compartment? I didn't actually check it, I'm not quite sure. But I don't think so. Let's enter the number that we're supposed to enter to get into the elevator. I need that code. Do we have the right code? Well, let's enter another code. Don't forget we were given a code on a telephone and we've got at least four codes by now. So let's enter the last one that we got. 
I think it was was it six, seven, eight, and that doesn't seem to be working. So at this point, I'm struggling to figure out how to enter the code into the actual game. So let's try that again. Let's try to insert the key card in there. That's correct. That's a great start. Beep, 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 beep. Right, okay, that's the key card. So now, hopefully, we can punch in a right code. What number are we going to enter? 879. And that means that it opens up. That's one of the codes that we've been given already. That opens up the secret room. You can see some of these rooms are decorated very creatively with the poolside scene that we saw earlier on and this one's got a knife in the background and you can see some of the plot we'll have to maybe write down some of the clues to figure out what's going on and of course just like Indiana Jones we can investigate that statue and pick that up what else what, what else have we found we found a micro cassette and a micro cassette wow we found a cassette player earlier on let's grab that micro Set. let's keep that in our inventory for now and I'm not sure whether we can pick up the silk handkerchief or not and the book on the bookcase so yet again I'm going around blindly at the moment figuring out what we're supposed to do in this location because really the cassette means that we can go all the way back to the beach and check that out but surely there must be something else that we need to do and the usual waving things around usually works. Was there something around here? Aha, a button that lights the lamp. And what does that do? Does that open up a secret compartment? Does that enable something when the lamp is lit? And so, well, we can fondle this thing all we like, but it's not really going to help us much. And the lamp is simply to illuminate a book, I think, on the shelf. And that means that we can maybe check that out for another clue. There's a manual hanging around, and that might be a clue. There is also a tome as well, I noticed. Tome, what is that? And the author's name is illegible. Oh, well, that was out of the picture. What else? An anthology somewhere around here. Let's see if we can read it with the lamplight. The anthology. What is that going to say? And yet again, it's one of those wave your mouse around the screen endlessly kind of games. And the anthology, there it is. And, well, not quite sure if that was any help to us whatsoever. So we are now hopefully halfway through this playthrough. And hopefully we've picked up all of the items from this room. It's very difficult to see. And I'm looking actually at the long play, well, the walkthrough guide, the written text at the moment. So it says that we're supposed to find something else. Let's have a look, manual. And maybe I'm not doing something. Ah, there's a spring there that opens up a secret compartment. Behind the food of the mind lie brews, okay? Food of the mind. So, not quite sure if that's true. Let's see what I can pick up. And that's fantastic. We seem to have closed everything that was supposed to be opening up. So, another quick trip to that walkthrough. So what is there? There's supposed to be a switch on the wall, I think. Is there something else that I can interact with apart from that glass? And did that just highlight? Was that my imagination? Cable. Cable. Let's pull that. Open hiding place. Conceal another. And that's a dictaphone. Well, that means maybe we can even play that tape whilst we're hanging around. That will give us a clue as to what we're supposed to be doing. So let's play detective, there's a dictaphone, we can't move it, but we can put a tape in there. And let's see, right, it's a solid dictaphone, that comes in handy. So Miss Dora, you're accidentally in the middle of one of these deep and complex stories. You know, only three prototype vials exist, but the formula can be obtained by analysis, one of which my son, I trust him completely. And so but there is a sample with you. I've got one, but there is a third sample. So you're going to have to find them. It was stolen, that maniac Peter Hillgate, better known as Doc. 
Doc, you can see, is in court, Mark. We we'll need to remember that. He's probably in synthesis in secret coconut grove laboratory. All right, then. So it's given us lots of clues there. If you read all that and wrote all that down, hopefully that will give us something. So what can we do now? It's given us the opportunity to move on to at a new location and at a ladies' underwear store in front of Doc's hideout. And can I find a way to infiltrate? You can see this screen is in the shape of a lady and it's great that some of the screens around the game are in very obvious shapes. So what can I do? Well, I'm going to pretend to be looking for something. I'm going to pick things up and those rooms in the back look tempting to walk through. So let's see. Ms. Taylor, Liz Taylor, what would you like? Well, I'm just browsing at the moment. I'd like to try something on, if that's okay. So, let's check out these. Nothing's open. This end one and the middle one. Uh, take this booth. I'll be with you in a second. So, what do we have? There is a poster and there is paper. Let's read that. Something, accidents, kitchen, mixture of toxic fumes and death. So, something ripped out of a newspaper. That might explain something. Not quite sure, can we pick that up? It's some kind of article. And in this game, you absolutely need every single clue that you can get your hands on. And obviously write that down. Because it's giving us two news articles now. Maybe it stores the important ones that we've found already. But there's nothing else that we can investigate in this cubicle. Television was a French company, they published lots of games including the Goblins series which were all programmed by MDO and I have no idea if that's one guy or three guys and maybe the first guy is Muriel Tramis and they also created European Space Station Simulator which was ahead of its time Simulator Space Station and also ESS Mega which was a spin-off of that game. So, Cocktail Software definitely had its heritage on the Amiga and the Goblin series was a massive hit on the Amiga and on the PC. And just like Goblins, it can be infuriating to have to bang your head against your brick wall, but you can see that middle option is now open. We can now go to the middle store. And look at that, there's a private door there. And I'm taking a big risk if I go through that private door and there's no sound behind that door. Do I investigate? Do I turn that lock? And I don't want to be booted out of the game. And there's a bell on top that would ring the alarm if I hadn't seen that. So that's a good idea. So do we go through the private door? Yes, we do. And it's a storeroom. So in here, there's another point and click puzzle that we need to work out. And we found a padlock key. So that's the first part of the puzzle worked out. We can now unlock the padlock and just the bar to work out. So at this point, I thought that I had a magnetic something or other on my location in my person. So let's grab that and let's see if that works. It's a bar. And under normal circumstances, I should be able to pull that bar out with brute strength, but it doesn't appear to be doing anything. It's partly jammed. If only I had some kind of thing to get it out. So we can't use the lamp. We're going to look it up in that solution. Yes, the middle booth that was unavailable before. That middle booth has what we're looking for. So now it's available. Let's head on in there. And what we're actually looking for is something to get rid of that bar. So we found a shoebox, a stiletto heel, and surely that is the thing that we're looking for. So, yet again, the things aren't too far away from what we need, although at first these things can be difficult to work out and quite head banging. 
Finally, we get that combination right. So we're a spy. We're supposed to be working these things out for ourselves. And so let's attack the boy now with the shoe. That reveals a safe. So guess what? The third part of this room is to figure out the combination to the safe, I think. So let's use a sticky label that we found. Not quite sure where we found that. Magnetic label worked perfectly on the metal door. Okay, fine. So we've now got the opportunity to work out how to use the safe. And the safe, of course, needs a special combination. And we've got four letters available, C, O, D and E. But there's only three spaces available in that space you can see there. And like normal safes, you're supposed to enter a symbol and then twist the barrel around then enter a second symbol and then you can progress through it like that. So what are we COD are we entering at the moment? COD. That's a COD number and damp that's not the right one. So what could it be? What could it possibly be? Well if you've written down the word DOC that we found earlier on in those speech marks that's precisely the right one because we're in DOC's lab at the moment. So it's me DOC what's going on? Let's open that safe. What is there in there? And it's, ooh, it's opened up a secret door to a lab. And so, all right then, we're reaching the end of this review and how far I got with it. And you can actually hear some sound effects in the lab. And if you have the walkthrough whilst you're playing this game, you'll find it enjoyable if not, you'll find yourself endlessly pointing and clicking everywhere, getting lost. And that isn't fun at the best of times. Having investigated too many jacket pockets now, and also in Dark Seed as well, we're definitely getting used to inspecting all those jacket pockets. So what have we found? A key! So what could the key possibly fit? Maybe that cabinet in the background? and it's always great to start stacking up those collectibles in this game or at least any of these point and click adventures even though it's disconcerting it usually gives us an icon bar at the bottom that we can click on in most of these but in this one it certainly doesn't but like beneath the steel sky it's mostly a point and click adventure so if you point something and click on it it usually does something so what could be this? Ah uh, Lou Dale that name seems to be familiar Lou, ah Okay, alright then, well, let's check this out. Lou Dale, that's definitely something that we'll have to remember. And it's photos of a guy, something to do with this vial, I presume. Maybe they're experimenting on a guy. It doesn't really look like anything is of value on this particular thing. I'm not quite sure. This is the very first time I've ever played this game, and I'm struggling to get anywhere with it. So let's, before we leave this room, check out all of the flasks. There's some quill vials in here. And I'm not sure, do we take those or do we not? This jar won't open. It's vacuum sealed, I suppose. So we can't do anything with those. Can we collect it? Well, maybe we're even supposed to put a mask on before we even handle that. And we've picked up a scalpel as well. Maybe we can knock the top off with a scalpel. And so use the scalpel on the jar. Um, pretty risky business, but do we need that? Do we actually not need that? Ah, we can use the shoe to break it open. And so grab those vials. Now we've got even more vials. Grab to the vial that we've got in the ice cube tray in our hotel. So before we get back to relaxing by the pool, let's just... Well, we can back, get back to that street, but we need to do something else whilst we're here. And this answering machine gives us a clue. Ah, the Seagull Hotel, that's what we're supposed to be going for. Well, actually, aren't we at the Seagull Hotel? Oh no, they're searching my room. Well, that's fantastic. They're talking about me. That's my hotel. Well, that means they're searching my room. Well, oh, fantastic. No, hold on a minute. This is an answering machine message, isn't it? So, whoever sent this answering machine message is telling somebody that I'm at the hotel and erase you. What a good idea. Whilst we're here, let's just erase that message 
and then they won't get the answering machine message and that means hopefully remembering to switch on the machine because there is an on and an off button as well let's switch it on let's rewind this and let's erase it all right all erased all the messages won't get through and maybe I should have even rewound that so that it wouldn't have seemed like we were tampering with equipment but according to the walkthrough that I read later on that's precisely what you're supposed to do and that's the last thing that you need to do in this location so let's get back to that hotel Oh no, Rob's up in our room. I hope they haven't destroyed Rob and trashed the room whilst they're at it. Let's grab the elevator and find out. Oh no, look at that. They've managed to grab Rob and trash the room whilst they're at it. So come on, Rob, get up. It's not that bad. It's only a knockout blow. Come on, stop snoring. They only use knockout gas. No sign of injury. Well, it looks like they've rifled through the room, but did they get the ice cubes? Here's the vial they must have left empty-handed. Rob must have drunk the contents. Well, that's interesting. If he hadn't put the ice cube in his drink, then we wouldn't have had that vial. So let's grab that. There's also a box of chocolates, my favourites. Let's grab them, save them for later. It robs the half the chocolates. That definitely sounds like him. What else can we have? My books are all over the floor. My karma sutra signed. That's just typical of men. Philosophical novels. Bumeru the Triangle. All right, then it's broke. Look at that. My bra slung all over. All over the place. It's even... They've turned my place upside down. Well, it's an empty ice cube tray. What can we do? Well, do we fill that up? Do we put that back in the machine? Or do we head out to the lobby at this point? Well, I've they've definitely searched everywhere. They've even got my negligee all over the floor. I bought this in Amsterdam. It cost me a fortune. It's in tatters now. They've searched everywhere, even including the rug. So, ah, lapel pins. They came from the Blue Red Club. All right, then they seem to have dropped a major clue here, a lapel pin. Fantastic, at least we know where to search on the rest of this Jackie Brown adventure. So whilst we go through this madcap thing and hopefully head down towards the lobby, you can see this room is in the shape of our face from the introduction. And that's one thing that I noticed whilst playing this game. Do we throw Rob into the shower? No idea, but let's check out those scores. Amiga Computing only awarded this 47%. Amiga Joker typically awarded this 48%. Amiga Action gave it 51. The One gave it 62. Amiga Format forked out 65%. The current Lemon Amiga score is 66%. And the main complaints were lack of music, dumb storyline, playing as a female, nothing much going on, lack of sound effects, that kind of thing. And so we move on to the higher scores. Amiga Power gave this 67%. Amiga Mania gave it 78. Amiga Games Magazine gave this 79. And the ever adorable CEO Amiga gave this a very representative 80%. Which means the highest high score is 80, the lowest is around 50. So that means the average is somewhere around 6 out of 10. During my play, it looks like I've called down to reception and reported it. And they've now phoned the police. The police are here. It's Ironside. Anybody's old enough to remember Ironside is certainly too old to remember the Amiga. So Inspector Ironside, let's get in there. And it's this guy, Priscilla. Tell me about it. What's going on? And so, Pedro de Helgos, let's speak to him. And of course, if we enter the wrong questions, we'll end up in jail. And I think that's precisely what I ended up doing during this playthrough. And because I didn't save it up, I didn't have a chance to go through this and by trial and error, get the questions right. 
So do I talk to this guy about the files? Do I reveal who I am? I'm Quill, I'm Jackie Brown, get me out of here. And if you answer the right questions, that's fantastic, but we're not going to do that. So I think this game had potential, it only came on two discs and it took half a meg of memory. So if they'd have used it one meg of memory and three discs, we'd have had that music, the graphics are great, I think the atmosphere is great, but the sudden deaths aren't, and because we didn't save it, unfortunately, we're not going to get much further. So it looks like we've been banged up into jail. Fantastic. Impossible, non existent file. So, unfortunately, this isn't working. We're going to have to quit. But thanks for watching another one of these point and click adventures. This has been fascination. So, if you like these games, check this out. Thank you.